thousands upon thousands of fans flocked to Deer Run today with a pair of JDC legends taking center stage once again. But before all that magic begins, the cutting continues as we wave goodbye to half of this year's JDC field. Yes, it's going to be a long day for them. Cut day was a good day for some as many start to focus on the weekend. But for others, it was a day of near misses and plenty of what ifs. And as the weekend gets closer, I want him to finish second every week and I want to beat him by one every week. So too does the brotherly love. So get ready for another amazing show. Oh man, I thought that shirt said Matt or at least Corey. I know I will take a nap for sure. <laughs> I know it's been a long day, but stick and stay. The 19th hole starts right now. Now from your official station for the John Deere Classic, welcome to the 19th hole on WQAD News 8. The 19th hole set is provided by Uncommon Ground. Welcome to the 19th hole. What a day it was out here at Deer Run. I'm Matt Randazzo. He's Corey Cuffler. And we haven't scared away <laughs> Celia oh, Palermo there. just yet. She is the PGA's own Celia Palermo. But I started here at WQA. That's right. So <laughs> I, I don't forget where I'm from, okay? She's a familiar face. We've had a great day, a lot of movement. We had a 59 yesterday, Celia, that didn't make it any clearer when it comes to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, not at all. There is plenty of company at the top of the leaderboard. And as always, as it is on Friday, there's plenty for us to get to here on the 19th Absolutely. hole. And don't forget, it is cut day. And one of the biggest names in JDC history flirted with that cut line all afternoon. Uh, we were watching all day, but we'll start at the top and the top of the leaderboard. And right now, as we speak, the leader right here is 29 year old Englishman, uh, Aaron Rye. Rye entered the week, ranked in the top 60, showing why right here on one. His second shot goes from 152 out to within 15 feet of the cup. His irons were good, his putter even better. Rye buries the 15 footer to get to 10 under par. The Englishman with eight birdies on the day. Rye cards a bogey free 63. As of right now, he's tied atop the leaderboard at 14 under par. There are some opportunities out there, I think, with how soft the course is playing. The fairways are that little bit wider. Uh, you can also be a little bit more aggressive to the pins. So, um, yeah, it, the plan was to be relatively aggressive anyway, but try and pick your moments, especially in conditions like today. Um, and I think we did a pretty good job at that. Joining Rye at 14 under is CT Pan. The former Washington standout finishing off a strong front nine on number eight. He leaves himself a 12 footer for birdie. The 32 year old had six birdies on the day. He also eagled number 14. It all adds up to a round two 63. And after a restless night, Pan is excited for the weekend. I had a terrible sleep last night. I had a really serious com uh, conversation with my NOC Olympic committee you know, back home. Uh, just trying to figure out all the arrangements before I go there. Uh, so it was, uh, it didn't go well, I can tell you that. And I did not sleep well, so it's uh, quite a surprise. Like I gotta say, I'm actually impressed by myself. Well, the story of round one in the entire sports world yesterday was this man, Hayden Springer, fresh off around 159, teeing off in one of the last groups this afternoon. And things didn't look great early on, starting on the back nine on 10, Springer with the five footer for birdie, and he would miss it, settle for par. In fact, Springer was stuck in neutral until the par five second. The 27 year old goes from the sand to the bottom of the cup for a birdie. The magic continuing on the par fives for him. That's when he took the lead at 15 under, but as of right now, he is at 12 under after back-to-back -back bogeys. He's two shots off the lead as we speak. Of course, he's still out on the course right now, so we'll get to our actual leaders right now. Two of them at the top. Celia, tell us a little bit about Aaron Rye. Yeah, Aaron Ryan, Englishman, he actually is based in Jacksonville, Florida, plays out of TBC Sawgrass, right down the street from where I live, and the home to the PGA Tour. A lot of people think of him as unique because, one, he plays with two gloves, mm -hmm. and two, he has iron covers on his clubs as well. He wears two gloves because, as a kid, uh, he was sent a set of gloves from a manufacturer, started wearing both, and the one time he forgot his second club, he said he couldn't feel the club right, and so he had to go back to two gloves. Last thing on him, the iron covers, 
it's a sign of respect for the high quality equipment that he had as a kid that his yeah. family maybe couldn't afford. His dad used to clean his irons every groove with baby oil and a pin. I hope wow. my kids aren't wow. listening to this right now. <laughs> <laughs> what about C.T. Pan, who's right up there with him? Yeah, winner of the 2013 RBC Heritage, a great PGA Tour event with a lot of history, mm -hmm. has um, struggled with injury, entered this season um, on a major medical extension. He had 13 starts to earn uh, 56 FedEx Cup points to satisfy that. He did that at the Mexico Open, where he finished T3, so found some form at that point in the season and has you know, tried to get things in form for the Olympics, like he mentioned. He right. played in 2016 and 2020, where he earned a bronze medal. Our two co-leaders right now, but there's plenty of company near the top, including uh, your pick to win this. He, yeah, thing. that guy would be Denny McCarthy. He's just a little bit off the pace heading into the weekend. On number one here, it would be the 31 year old showing off the flat stick. The 35 footer is read perfectly and we'll find nothing but the bottom of the cup. McCarthy with around 266. He's at 12 under just a couple shots back. Good spot entering the weekend. Um, you know, 12 under typically scores here, kind of reach that 20 under ballpark, uh, maybe even a little little lower. Um, so 12 under after two rounds, it's, it's a good solid start. Um, looking, you know, I'd like to clean up a few things and, um, you know, maybe something similar on the weekend. Let's take a look at that. Blackhawk Bank and Trust leaderboard, CT Pan and Aaron Ryan at the top. Harry Cole right now at 13 under. There's Eric Cole, Davis Thompson, and Hayden Springer right now at 12 under with a slew of golfers at 12 under par. Well, the crowds were great here at Deer Run, but make no mistake about it, the most popular group teed off this afternoon. We'll start with Zach Johnson after around 165 yesterday. The 2012 JDC champ kept things rolling early on. ZJ had five birdies on the front nine, seven on the day. But he also had three bogeys. It's around 267. Zach at 10 under likes where he's at, but he wouldn't call himself actually in contention just yet. My mentality when it comes to that being in contention doesn't come down to the last nine holes on Sunday. So we're halfway. I, I, I'm not in contention. I am in a position to make a move tomorrow. Hopefully put a, myself in a position to make a move on Sunday. Jordan Spieth with another relatively slow start to the John Deere Classic yesterday, but the two-time champion wasted no time getting things rolling today. On one, it's Spieth from 111 yards out, sticking it to within five feet from the cup. Spieth starts his day with an impressive birdie. In fact, he birdied three of his first four holes of the day. Six birdies on the day, but a pair of bogeys as well. It's a round two 67 for Spieth, but he'll be here this weekend at six under par. You know, I'll try and shoot 14 under on the weekend and and uh, and post a good finish. I don't think it'll be good enough, but I'm not going to try and shoot 20 under because you get in some trouble. But just you know, take chances when they when they come and be aggressive on the greens. Some other big names will be around for the weekend as well. They have some work to do, though, once they get there. Former champion Lucas Glover, the nice birdie here on nine. He had six birdies, three bogeys as well. He's 10 under heading into moving day tomorrow. Meanwhile, it was a much better day for Jason Day on the par 3 16th. The 13-time winner would stick it six feet from the cup. He made the easy birdie. He had five birdies, one bogey. He gets a round two 67. Day will be here for the weekend as well at six under par. So some good names heading into the weekend. And it's the one I want to talk to you about is the cut line was at five under. That's, that's crazy. That's the lowest cut line I think we've had here ever. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of a Corn Ferry Tour event because out there, if you're not making birdies, you're getting lapped. I mean, on the Corn Ferry Tour, it's not unheard of to have a cut be at seven under. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So it tells you about the kind of guys, especially some that you'll see at the top of the leaderboard today who are coming from the Corn Ferry Tour. They're accustomed to making a lot of birdies, and out here, you've got to do that as well. Well, one guy who did make the cut was Jordan Spieth, and I'm sure that's going to make a lot of people happy this weekend. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. One thing I read this week is that he's actually playing with the same prototype of putter that he used when he won here in 2013 and 2015. He's got to clean up his putting, of course, but just a cool little tidbit there. He has, you know, had a nagging wrist injury over the last couple of months, so that could be a play as well. But, you know, Jordan's not playing to make the cut. He's playing to win, yeah. and so we're going to need to see him make big astronomical moves right. over the weekend if we're going to find him at the top if there. If anyone can do it, it is definitely Jordan.